Hello and welcome to the video for sixth grade for Thursday, April the 30th. This is going to cover our lesson working on histograms. So histograms give us a set of data values all combined into one generalized um, graph. So um, the benefits of that is, are that we can include lots of different points of data and we don't have to have a very large um, complicated graph that shows every single uh, data point. Unfortunately, because we group everything together, we don't get specific details usually. So for instance, um, we're going to be working with how many winners were between 20 and 29 years old for this. We have one result, but for that one result, we don't know the exact age between 20 and 29 that that person was, nor, the, nor do we know exactly what the ages are of the people in this category or any of the other categories. We just get a broad range. Now, as we go through the lesson, they will give us the specific uh, details as we make one of our own, but for this, we can't tell exactly what the specific ages are. So our other bar that represents people under 40 is going to be our 30 to 39. And so we can look at the frequency and there are six people that won that award that were between the age of 30 and 39. We don't know exactly what their specific age was, only that it falls in this range. So we can combine both of these. We get one winner plus six winners equals seven winners for the number of people under the age of 40 that won this particular award. So seven of our winners uh, were under 40 years old. And as I mentioned, if we were to take a look at number one real quick, is it possible to know from the histogram if any winner was exactly 37 years old? No, because we do not have the specific data. Now, it could be reasonable to guess that one of them could have been 37 years old because we have six different winners, but they all could have been the exact same age, and it could have been a different age than the age that they're asking for. We don't know. Again, that's kind of the downside of that. So if we have something like this, then that makes up for uh, that because we can know the exact values. So I'm going to talk through number one and number three, and then I'm going to pause the video, let you go ahead and work on it on your own, and then I will show you what I came up with. So we can do the frequency table real quick. So I had two people that were between 10 and 19 years old for 20 to 29. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six people. Between 30 and 39, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five people. And then for 40 through 49, I would have one, two people. And so as I make my bars, we're going to try to make them all kind of blend together into one thing. And then the heights for each bar, so 10 to 19, will go up to and then we'll kind of blend it into our bar for 20 to 29, which will go up to 6. Then 30 to 39 will drop down to 5, and then 40 to 49 will drop down to 2. And so that will kind of um, complete drawing uh, the picture that goes with that. And then for our question number 3, we want to figure out how many people at the health club are 30 and older. We can do that by um, adding these two numbers together. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and let you pause as well. Um, and I will see you uh, in just a moment. All right, so welcome back from the break. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what I went ahead and uh, did on my screen for this. So here is my uh, histogram. So what I did was by making a normal bar graph and then I erased the line so that I could put color in. Um, if you went ahead and made it as a normal bar graph and then just colored in different colors, you essentially have the same kind of um, idea. But um, again, we're kind of looking, oops, um, I want something that looks a little bit more like this that doesn't have the solid outline. So that's what I was trying to do with that. Um, 
So what we have is I alternated colors. And so this gives me, um, I didn't label it. So this should be labeled 10 to 19. Uh, this one should be labeled 20 to 29. This one should be labeled 30 to 39. And this one should be labeled 40 to 49. Um, using that to find the answer, the number of people that are 30 or older, I have five people for this part. I guess that didn't uh, end up being a straight line as well as I thought it would, plus two, and that would give us seven. And uh, that's a horrible looking seven, so we will try that again with a different pen. There we go. So um, let's talk about the bottom portion. So I know I've assigned this part. Um, I'm not going to take the time to draw a picture for this. So um, I will let you practice this one on your own and see what you come up with. And so, but we will talk about um, the remaining questions. So if I take all of these data points and I go ahead and make a chart and I make one section of the chart be 10 through 19, then 20 through 29, and then 30 through 39. And then I make a different one, cutting the amount that I'm grouping together um, by half, essentially. So instead of doing 10 different um, possibilities, I'm only working with five. So 10 through 14 um, is going to be five um, intervals. And then this would be another five, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 20 through 24. So that's going to change the shape for starters. It's going to change um, our answers for another thing. So whereas we might get something uh, that if we were just working with three categories, we might get something that looks like this to start with. If we change it to six, we might find out that we actually have more of our 10 to 19 kind of in the early range um, or an even amount. So it looks like for 10 to 19, we actually have more backloaded on the back end. So we might have something that starts like this and then groups up like this and then it's going to give us a different shape, even though uh, we end up with... Um, a certain number. We're still going to have the same number, but they're going to be spread out um, more consistently with um, the uh, smaller intervals instead of the larger grouping them together. So we get more specific data, which is going to change our shape, and it's probably going to change um, the height of some of these. And we would have, instead of three starting out, we would have six of them for one, two, three, four, five, six uh, interval ranges. So that's how that would work. Let's go ahead and talk through the homework real quick. So they want us to go ahead for number two and explain what the numbers on the y-axis is. So again, this is going to be our y-axis. This is going to be the x-axis. Um, and then we want to figure out how many people got a score of 80 or greater. So what I'm going to ask you to do is on the honor system, unless you are uh, doing pictures, Go ahead and try this part and see what you come up with using these ranges. And then you can go ahead and calculate either by using this part up here or by once you are finished, we are going to take everything in the last two categories uh, for that uh, answer for this one. Number two, pretty self-explanatory what the answer should be for that, as I've already kind of highlighted that. For number six, we can talk about how many customers are in the restaurant total um, and how we would know the answer for that. So your hint is going to be take a look at the categories for every single age and then think about what you can do to get the total answer of the number of people that are in there. Uh, number one on the back, um, we are going to get how many customers spent less than $20. So Think about what you need to look at for that part to group them together. And then use the histogram in problem one, how many customers bought something. This is going to give us something similar to what we did for um, our last one, uh, number six, uh, for this one. So hope that helps for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments in Google Classroom, and I'll be happy to uh, help you as best I can. Uh, the homework video for this will come out on Friday, as will our videos for uh, the last lesson of the packet that went home. So hope you have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.